and give the floor to World Union for Progressive Judaism. It is nearly three years since an affair occurred at the Council on this very item concerning our joint statement on a follow-up to the DPA regarding violence against women. We were immediately stopped on a point of order by a member state delegate who later declared that, quote, Islam will not be crucified at this council, end of quote. We had simply condemned FGM, the barbaric female genital mutilation of up to three million young girls every year in 32 countries, 29 of which are members of the OIC. The stoning of women, honor killings, and the marriage sale of nine-year-old girls, all carried out in the name either of traditional practices or cultural relativism, but with irrefutable religious connections. We shall again quote from two experts on this crucial phenomenon, which is more and more on the rise. In 2003, Mrs. Radhika Kumar Swami stress, stressing the integrity of the UDHR and international covenants, provided an analysis of cultural relativism in her final report to the Commission on Violence Against Women. She wrote, and I quote, the greatest challenge to women's rights and the elimination of discriminatory discriminatory laws and harmful practices comes from the doctrine of cultural relativism, end of quote. In 2008, in a 60th anniversary UDHR lecture here in Geneva, Nobel Peace Prize laureate Shirin Abadi declared, and I quote, the idea of cultural relativism is nothing but an excuse to violate human rights, end of quote. She also condemned the fact that in her native country, a girl is considered an adult and liable to punishment, even execution at nine, and a boy at 15. Such crimes carried out traditionally, but also with official religious backing, should not be treated as taboo subjects at the council because of fear of religious sensitivities. The growing phenomenon of cultural relativism should not be supported by self-censorship at the UN, and especially not under the guise of complementary standards. It is time for more and more states and NGOs to speak out against all the roots of such barbaric practices against women. We appeal to both the Council and the High Commissioner to reconsider this matter and end any complicit silence. Thank you, Madam. I thank you and give